Now this video has been collated to illustrate all the challenges and the problems that we have for the British. It begins with excerpts from the Torwine Council meeting that agreed to purchase the site. It's best to consider the site in, in, in three areas. Area 1 is the area of largest dereliction. It's probably the area that people call the British. Um, it's 170 acres uh, and it's land that's uh, been severely disturbed by uh, both iron working and um, coal mining. Uh, this coral reef spoil up to up to depth of 16 meters on the site, um, and if you imagine, there's two valleys, two, two 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 streams that flow into this area, and a huge plug has been put in there of of, of, of this material, and that causes flooding uh, and the like. Um, within the area, when also there are two listed buildings and a, a scheduled ancient monument. Area two is less disturbed, and that's the two valleys I've just mentioned with the, the, the streams coming into the site. Um, it's less disturbed, but it is disturbed, and there's work that need, is necessary there to make it safe in terms of adits and shafts, and there are listed, uh, listed structure in there, the chimney, which probably everybody knows. Area three, and that goes right up the mountain on the road up to Lynn Hilleth and over, it, it, all you, all you see from the base of the site forms part of this site. That area on top of the mountain and going up the mountain is largely undisturbed uh, and there are no proposals for that. Um, the preferred option would uh, allow acquisition of the whole site as it currently stands. It would allow urgent work to be carried out in terms of health, safety, signage, etc. It's required for, for immediate safety reasons on the site. It would allow detailed work uh, in terms of preparation of the tenders for remediation. And it would al allow the appointment of contractors to undertake remediation in areas one and two that I mentioned earlier. Um, it would allow elevation of the two water courses. That means bringing them up to surface and, and getting re including attenuation ponds and, and the like that would allow the flooding issue to be addressed would allow work to the British top tips and it would allow the introduction of soil forming material to allow the site to regenerate um, and, and green and be greened essentially. It would pr produce, uh, allow the production of a development framework that was mentioned earlier in the, the answer that Councillor Clark gave to the question and that's a very important process that we go through with public consultation uh, to, to form a uh, a plan for remediating the site and also a plan for the after uses that would go on to the site. Um, we'd look at uh, longer term opportunities on the site. Housing has been mentioned. There are opportunities for green, green energy uh, generation on the site uh, and perhaps other uses that, that, that aren't, aren't apparent at the moment. Uh, we've been talking to Gwent Wildlife Trust about their acting as custodians for, for the wider site, the site that, that wouldn't uh, fall into the development category. There are liabilities attached to the site. Uh, I've mentioned the potential to flood. Um, there, are, there, are, uh, there is a landslip on the site and there's potential for, for, for other landslips to, to arise. Um, there are mine shafts and deep adits on the site that haven't been treated. Uh, and there's a range of potentially dangerous buildings on the site. Uh, so that's the warts and all, if you like, uh, of the deal. You take on all of that. Um, in terms of the listed and, and scheduled structures on the site, uh, they're in, uh, in largest part, a bad, uh, bad array, if you like. Um, they're listed at 5.32. Um, the, the monies that we've attached to the scheme don't address the issues with the buildings. They would have to be addressed in the future. If we loaded that cost in, uh, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have got a deal with Welsh Government. Those would have to be addressed in the future. And, and if you look at the site, it's unlikely that those, those structures would be addressed by anyone until the site has been reclaimed. Uh, and the plan is that we would make safe the buildings, we would fence them off, we would reclaim the site, and then we would look at 
means grant, uh, grant that could be brought to the site to bring those, those buildings back into some, some form of beneficial use. In terms of consultation, um, John Cox mentioned the liaison group, which has been in place for a good 20 years, um, uh, who support the proposal. And I've mentioned Gwen Wildlife Trust in there, who are looking to uh, take on management of part of the site. Um, and then obviously the usual internal uh, consultations. Um, I also want to pay compliment to people that have been struggling with this for 20 years. Um, I know that uh, I've been in meetings as the ex-chairman of planning many years ago with Duncan Smith, so have lots of other councillors, um, and they've been heckled and they've had a rough time from the liaison committee who were fighting their corner for the people in that area. I give praise to the liaison committee. They've done an excellent job over the last 20 years of ensuring that whatever goes there is going to be the right thing for uh, the people of the British. And I hope when we talk about handing it over to Grant Wildlife Trust, no trouble with that, but I hope you're going to engage and allow some of these people from the liaison committee to be involved in that, having spent 20 years doing it, I think they should have an involvement in it. That's the first thing. The plans for Big Pond, or Kumsachen Reservoir, in the 1997 proposals for the British was that Kumsachen Reservoir would become a recreation area and a nature reserve. Underneath the whole site, there are watercourses, and it's frightening to think what would happen if any of these were to be blocked by misadventure. There is a problem, therefore, do we dig them up and take all the water to the surface, or do we just hope that the watercourses will remain intact for the next 100 years? One of the previous proposals for water treatment was to dig up the football field below Big Arch and have a reed bed there. I'm not against there being a reed bed, but it doesn't, to me, to make sense to treat the water for the iron contamination and other thing at the end of the process, when a much better place to treat it may be before it enters the site. That needs to be resolved. One obvious use for green energy would be to utilize the water from Big Pond for a hydroelectric scheme. And we need to look at that and possibly other ways of producing local energy as part of the plans. Previous proposals were to cover the whole site with housing. As there's to be no open cast, the only places where housing can be built with a new scheme will be at Abbasakan House, near Elizabeth Row, and opposite the Globe, where the 1997 scheme envisaged having a new school. The basic proposal today is that the site should be as far as possible cleaned and greened, made safe, and that wildlife should be encouraged to flourish there. It's been agreed that Gwent Wildlife will manage the site as they do in other valleys. There's a huge number of disused coal, uh, coal mining shafts and adits, and the money that's been set aside for reclaiming the land assumes that most of these will have to be treated I'm not absolutely sure about that because some of them have been there for over a hundred years without causing any problems. But I am more concerned about the deterioration which will occur for the chimney. Looking at that chimney, it does seem to me that if we don't do anything immediately, we may well find that within three years, the whole thing is a pile of bricks at the bottom and it'll be much more expensive to restore. However, the other listed buildings, I can quite understand there's not much point in doing anything immediately. The NCB building and the quadrangle uh, are really so far gone that there isn't much point in going for an emergency action. And the Cornish engine house, whatever happens to it, will be fairly easy to rebuild. This video has shown that there's a whole range of questions to be answered about the development. The plan is 
for there to be a task force which will take into account ev the views of the community and what is practically uh, possible. It's very important that the community has its say in this, although ultimately the final decisions will depend upon the money that's available and the technical advice we receive. But your views are very welcome immediately.